In this video, I'm going to show you how to add custom game mechanics to your Spatial OS based multiplayer game. Our example will include implementing very basic resource collection. Along the way, you'll learn how to define your own components using Spatial OS schema lang, and then how to interact with those components using custom worker logic. My name is Charles, and this is Infallible Code, a channel designed to help you become a better game developer. If you'd like to learn more about Unity, programming, and game development, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you'll be notified whenever a new video is made available. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the example project, which should look familiar if you've been following along with this series. We'll start it up by hitting Ctrl L on Windows or Command L on Mac, and then run the development scene. As you can see, we can connect to the server and move around this very simple environment. You'll also notice this small orb that's supposed to represent a collectible object in our world. But as of right now, it doesn't do anything. It'll be our job to add that functionality, which we'll do by defining our own spatial OS component and implementing some custom worker logic. Why don't we get started? This project utilizes the Game Object Creation Feature module that's available in the Spatial OS GDK for Unity. We can use this module to spawn our resources in the scene from a prefab. To do that, we're going to create a Spatial OS entity template for our resource and add it to the snapshot. Then we'll create a couple of prefabs that'll represent resources on both the server and the client respectively. Finally, we'll place the prefabs into folders within our project that the game object creation feature module expects to find them in order to function correctly and spawn them in the scene. Actually, why don't we start there? The game object creation feature module instantiates game objects for entities based on their metadata value. If we take a look at the resources folder, we can see that there are two folders nested within the prefabs folder, Unity client and Unity game logic. These represent the workers that connect to our spatial OS server. Within those folders are a couple of prefabs called player. So when these workers connect to the server, a game object will be created for each spatial OS entity that has the metadata value equal to player. The Unity client workers will spawn this one, and the Unity game logic workers will spawn this one. So all we need to do is drag our resource game object into each of these folders to ensure that both the Unity client and Unity game object workers will be able to spawn resources. Now we can go ahead and add our resource entity to the snapshot. Open up the snapshot generator class found inside of the snapshot generator folder within the editor directory. Now, just a heads up, this file will only be available if you're following along or using the blank starter project for the basis of your project. The snapshot generator has a method called create snapshot that's responsible for, well, creating the snapshot. In Spatial OS, a snapshot represents the state of your Spatial OS world. This includes all of the entities and their components. Now, we can see here that the blank starter project has some logic that adds the player spawner to the snapshot. But we want to add our resource as well. So why don't we create a method called add resource and give it a reference to the snapshot and a coordinate. I'll just use coordinates.0. Perfect. Next, we'll need to create an instance of an entity template. Entity template is a utility class that we can use to build spatial OS entities. We simply add all of the components that make up our entity and then add the template to the snapshot by calling add entity. So what components should make up a resource? Well, we'll definitely want to include metadata so the game object creation feature module knows which prefab to instantiate. We can do this by calling add component and then passing in an instance of metadata's snapshot class. Then we can declare the right axis. For this, I'm going to use the worker type variable that's exposed by the Unity Game Logic connector class. In the blank starter project, the Unity Game Logic connector class represents the server. So this declares that the server should have write access over this component rather than the client. Next, let's add a position component using the coordinates that we passed into our add resource method. And then a persistence component, which is required by all entities that are saved to a snapshot. Again, I'll give the server write access over each of these components. Now, I think these components will be enough to represent a resource for now, but we do need to explicitly set the write access for the entity ACL component, which gets added to every entity template automatically. We can do this by calling set component write access and then referencing the entity ACL component. 
by passing in its component ID. All right. Now, we can finish this up by declaring which workers have read access over this entity's components. Add a call to set read access and pass in the worker types of each worker that's included in the blank starter project. So that would include the Unity client, Unity game logic, and mobile client workers. And that's it. We've added our resource entity to the snapshot, but it won't take effect just yet. Before we move on, we need to regenerate the snapshot. So switch back to Unity, expand the Spatial OS menu, and click on Generate Snapshot. An editor window should pop up that'll let us configure the path of the snapshot. But we're just going to keep the defaults for now, so we can go ahead and click on Generate Snapshot. Beautiful. Now the resource should spawn the next time we run the project. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'll remove the resource from the scene, and then hit Control l on Windows or command L on Mac to start a local instance of Spatial OS. If we take a quick look at the command window that pops up, you should see a line that says Spatial OS will launch from the snapshot file, followed by a file path, which includes the resource entity placed at coordinates 000. Let's start up the development scene. And sure enough, there it is. Excellent. Now that we've got a way to represent resource entities in our scene, let's add some functionality to make them collectible. We'll do this using component commands. Component commands are commands that are invoked by workers and responded to by whichever worker has write access authority over that component. We're going to use spatial OS schema lang to define our own component called resource with a component command called collect. Then we'll add the component to our resource entity and give write access to the server. That way, clients will be able to collect resources and the server will be able to handle removing them from the scene. Let's go ahead and implement that now. The first thing we'll need to do is define our custom resource component using schema lang. Navigate to the schema directory that's found in the root folder of your spatial OS project, and then open the project specific schema folder. If you're following along with this series, then you should have created one called spatialcraft. Then create a file inside of that folder called resource.schema and open it up in your code editor. If you're not familiar with Spatial OS schema lang, then I recommend taking a look at the documentation or checking out my video, but it's not necessary to follow along now. Let's start by adding the package definition. I'll call mine com.infallibleCode, which is the same one we used in part four of the series for the player transform component. Then let's define our custom resource component using the component keyword, and then give it a unique ID. I'll assign it the ID 4001, since we gave the player transform component 4000. Now at this point, we can start adding properties. I'm thinking that for now, we'll just add a boolean to indicate whether or not the resource has been collected. And each property requires an ID that's unique to the component. So we'll assign it an ID of one. Now we can go ahead and define the component command, which we'll use to notify the component's owner when the resource has been collected by a client. Component commands require both a request and response type. The request type is the data that's sent to the worker that owns the component, the one that has write access and response to the command. And the response type is the data that's sent back to the worker that issued the command, which will be one of the clients. Luckily for us, we don't really need to send or receive any data just yet, so we can just create two empty types for now. We can call them collect request and collect response, and then use them in our command definition, which uses the command keyword. Collect response is our return type, and collect request is a parameter. Perfect. Now we just need to generate this component's code and create some workers that can utilize it. Back in Unity, expand the Spatial OS menu and click on Generate Code. This will compile all of the project schema files into C -sharp code. Once that's done, create a new mono behavior called Collect Request Handler, and another called Collect Response Handler. Now, these names might be a little too on the nose, but they serve to make this tutorial easier to follow. All right, now let's open up Collect Request Handler in the code editor. This mono behavior will live on the client's game object representation of a resource, and it'll be responsible for reacting to player input via its collider. Let's keep the logic simple for now. In the update method, we can just cast array from the current mouse position and determine whether or not it hits anything on the resources layer.
And of course, we should only check this when the player attempts to interact with the resource. So let's put a check in for input and short circuit the function if we don't find any. Now, the idea is that if we detect a hit, we'll call the collect command on this entity's resource component. To do that, we'll need a reference to a class called resource command sender, which does exactly what it sounds like it does. Let's add it as a field and call it command sender. And then mark it with the require attribute. This tells SpatialOS to automatically inject the field with an instance of the resource command sender. This class, by the way, is one of the classes that was generated from our schema file, and we'll see a couple more shortly. All right, next, we're gonna need to know the ID of this entity so we can send our command to the correct component. Let's add a reference to entity ID, and again, mark it with the require attribute. Now, we can send the collect command by calling command sender dot send collect command and passing in the entity's ID and a request object. Beautiful. We've successfully sent our collect command to the resource. Let's respond to it using the collect response handler. Open it up and add a resource command receiver field and again, mark it with the require attribute. Then in the onEnable method, we can register a response that updates the resource's state by setting isCollected to true. To do that, we'll need a reference to the resource writer. Now we can send an update that includes the new value using the built-in blittable bool type, which acts as a value wrapper. Perfect. It would be great if we could hide collected resources on our clients. So let's switch back to the collect request handler and add a resource reader field. We can use the reader to read the current value of is collected and then enable or disable the game object's mesh renderer accordingly. So we'll need to add a reference to the renderer and then populate it in on enable. And then use the resource readers on update event to update its state. So we'll register with on update and then basically disable the render once the resource has been collected. Awesome. Now all we need to do is add the resource component to the entity and then we can switch back to Unity and put it all together. So open up the snapshot generator class again, where we added our logic to add resources to the snapshot and then use the add component method to add the resource component to the template. That's it. Now switch back to Unity. We'll need to do a couple of things to get this working. First, since we just finished updating it, let's regenerate the snapshot. Expand the SpatialOS menu, click on Generate Snapshot, and then Generate the Snapshot. Next, open up the client's resource prefab and add the collect request handler to its set of components. And make sure that it's part of a layer named resources. Then open up the server's resource prefab and add the collect response handler to its set of components. And finally, go ahead and start up the project. Hit Control L on Windows or Command L on Mac to start up a local instance of Spatial OS. Then run the development scene. Once we're connected, we can locate the resource, target, and collect. And there you have it, we collected the resource. Well. Sort of. We'll need to add some logic that keeps track of our inventory, but, but I'll leave that as an exercise for you. And that's it. We officially have our first feature. So we're ready to deploy this baby to the cloud and send it off to our testers. But we'll save that for the next video. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and a comment letting me know what you thought. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'll catch you in the next video. Special shout out to Trond, Loot Pigeon, Dark Rush Photography, Justin Hurst, NZ, Sean Carey, Thomas, and Wayne Glows.